In this video, I want to show you how to create simple methods which allow us to split up our C Sharp code into multiple code blocks. Now, we're going to discuss in just a moment why we might want to do this. But simply put, uh, when we are talking about methods, it's a block of code that's given a name so that you can execute that block of code by calling it from another block of code. It's one of the main building blocks when you're building larger applications, and we'll talk about the other building block in day two, uh, in a lesson in day two. Okay, so why would we ever want to split up our code into multiple code blocks? Isn't it a good idea to just keep it all in one big long passage of code? Well, there's actually many reasons why we want to split our code up into smaller blocks of code. Uh, first of all, it's a good idea to never write the same code twice. In fact, whenever you're writing code and you find yourself copying and pasting or rewriting the same line of code, you should stop yourself and think, wait a second, this is an opportunity for me to break out this, this section of code and put it into its own method so that, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it'll reduce the size of your code overall, which reduces the possibility that you've got a problem. Okay, less code, less problems, just like less money, less problems, although I'd like to find that out for myself someday. Okay, the second part of this is that if you do have a problem in your code, uh, then you only need to go one place and fix it. There's a danger with copying and pasting code because if you make a mistake uh, and you paste it to a hundred different places in your code, now you got to go clean that up in a hundred different places. Those of us who are started out as junior programmers and made those mistakes have felt the pain of having to go back and fix a lot of problems all over the code. So you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. Uh, the other thing is that if the requirements change, if you need to add some functionality or change the way that it works, you don't have to go to a hundred different places in code to fix it. You just have to go to the one little place in code where you defined it and you just kind of farmed out that functionality every time you needed it, you can just go to that one place, correct it, and now it'll work throughout your entire application. So there's a lot of benefits to using little helper methods or even uh, larger methods uh, as we'll look at in day two, okay? So we've already been working with methods up to this point, I just haven't really used that term. We worked with the button click event handler many times, and that's just a special kind of method. Uh, it's a specific method that's triggered whenever somebody interacts with our application and taps a button on the phone screen. Uh, and we called it an event handler. Uh, really, it's just a method with superpowers. It is executed by the user. Now we're going to create methods that are executed by other parts of our code. We can actually give it a name and then call that name to execute that block of code. Okay? So let's start by creating a new project. And this time we're going to name it Simple Helper Methods and then click the OK button. And I'm going to keep the user interface simple. I'm just going to use a button and a text block beneath it. And I'm not even going to change the names. I'm going to get a little bit lazy here. And I am going to remove the text value from our text block. Now I'm going to double click our button so that we can move into the code editing area. I'm going to move my mouse cursor to the uh, ending curly brace and I'm going to hit return a couple of times. And now this is the target area where I want to write my helper method. This helper method will be sort of a brother or sibling to this button one click event method that we just created by double clicking our button. What I want to make sure to do is write the code right here. I don't want to write it anywhere else. I want to make sure that it's above these final two uh, ending curly braces that define the class code block and the namespace code block. What are these? Why have we not talked about them yet? We will on day two. Trust me. Just, just hang in there all in due time. Okay. But now I'm going to write a simple helper method. It's actually going to give us a super secret formula uh, that we're going to use in this application. So here we go. Private string super secret formula and then I'm going to use the return keyword hello world okay so you might have guessed by now that this isn't a very secret formula or nor is it super uh, but it'll suffice for what what we have in mind here as we discuss helper methods okay so what I want to do is discuss each part of 
of this. Um, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to actually execute this code block within our button one click event handler. So first of all, let's start off with the word private. We've seen this used a couple of times throughout. And private simply means that it cannot be called by any other code in our project. Even if we were to add other XAML pages, as we'll do on day two, they're not going to be able to even see this super secret formula. It's local in scope within this code block. It can only be called within this code block. So the sibling here, it can call this code. But another click event that perhaps happens in another file that we don't yet have in our Solution Explorer wouldn't even be able to see it. Okay, So the opposite of that is public. If I say any more about this, we're going to encroach on a discussion of object-oriented programming, which I really don't want to do uh, in this series of videos. There are other videos and series on LearnVisualStudio.net, on MSDN, out in the web that you can reference, and that's a large topic. But at any rate, um, just use the word private for now, follow along and hopefully this will all make sense for you. Uh, this is a special type of method that is going to return a value out of it. Um, we'll look at other methods that return nothing back and we'll use a different keyword in place of string. But what I'm saying is that when you call super secret formula you should expect to get a string in return. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now I have the name for super secret formula. I've given this code block defined in these open and close curly braces a name so that it can be called from another block of code someplace else. In this case I named it super secret formula. I can name it anything I want to name it. I generally like to keep it descriptive of what its purpose is. Um, also notice that I have an, uh, an open and close parenthesis right next to the name uh, and I'll explain why that is a little bit later in this video, but I'll be able to pass values into my super secret formula uh, in just a moment. So let's put a bookmark there and come back to that in a moment. Let me talk about the name here as well. Um, whenever you see the camel case, which to, just as a reminder, as we were talking about variables, we talked about camel case. The same thing holds true now when we're naming these private helper methods. We start off with a lowercase s, and then we see uppercase letters throughout the remainder of the name whenever a new word starts. And so it looks like a camel, there, therefore it's called camel case because it's got the humps in the middle, right? Okay, kind of silly, but you get the idea. And uh, it's just a naming convention that developers use to communicate to themselves and to other developers that this is private in scope. If we were to change this to a public method, we would probably want to change the capitalization scheme to use an uppercase S here. Uh, again, I don't want to talk about public methods. Just bear in mind that the way things are named are important to developers. So when you're in Rome, you should follow the naming convention of the Romans, okay? That's the moral of the story. Next, we have our code block beneath the declaration for the method. And we have one line of code. Again, we could have multiple lines of code in this code block if we needed to. This simply uses the return keyword to return the string hello world. Return works in conjunction with the data type. So it would expect to deliver out of this code block a value that is of type string. In this case, the value that's being returned out of our method is the literal string hello world. Let's move on and now talk about how to call this code. So in this case, what I want to do, I think we're just going to call this text block one dot text equals super secret formula. All right, so notice that I'm setting my text property, which only can accept the type of string to super secret formula, which as you can see with the little helper window beneath it is returning type string. So no conversions are necessary. Uh, this will line up just perfectly. And I don't have to create a variable first to hold the value and then set the text block one dot text equal to my value, some variable, okay? I can do it all in one line of code. Um, and notice that as I'm calling it, I have to use the right operator for method invocation, the open and close parentheses, just as we saw previously uh, when we talked about operators. All right, so if I run the application now, I'm gonna save it and then run the application Admittedly, this may not do a whole lot to excite us 
It looks a lot like what we did in the very first uh, lesson today, but the way that we achieved it is important in so much that we learned how to reference and call a block of code with a name, which we call methods, and return a value and use that within our application. In this case, just returning and setting it equal to our text property of our text block. Okay, easy enough, right? So let's go ahead and improve this example. And what I wanna do this time is introduce the notion of input parameters. And to do that, what I wanna do is type inside of the open and close parentheses here, I'm gonna create a variable called my name. And it's a special kind of variable that can be passed into it from the code that calls my method. And then I'm gonna use that new my name variable like so. I'm gonna use that uh, string.format and we use that funky syntax that we saw a little bit earlier today and I'm gonna pass in my name. So now it's gonna concatenate or, or actually inject my name and replace this little uh, replacement character here with the open and close curly brace and the number zero. Now, when I did this, when I created a new parameter, notice that it broke the code that calls super secret formula. I see a red squiggly line, again, Visual Studio's way of telling me something is not quite right. So to remedy this, what I'm gonna have to do is pass in a value and I could either give it a variable here or I'm just gonna go ahead and hard code my name, Bob. And when I do that, the red squiggly line goes away. And essentially what's happening here is I'm gonna call super secret formula and pass in the value of Bob as a variable, as an input parameter to my formula. And now it's gonna use that value in the body of the method that I define. In this case, simple, right? Just doing a little replace to, uh, to give us a special message. And we can see that it all works. Great. All right, so the key takeaway in this video, however, is the use of methods. We'll be using methods often in the coming videos for various purposes, and I just wanted to make sure that you've had some exposure and explanation uh, about what they do and how they work before we really get started in using them uh, in earnest. As I said at the outset, a method is just one of the building blocks that we're gonna use often when we build larger and larger applications. We'll need to understand a little bit about classes as well, which you can think of as name blocks of code that are containers for our methods. And we'll talk about this at length on day two as we talk about classes and namespaces. Okay, but for now, I think we're done with the videos for day one. If you've stuck with me this far, congratulations. I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. You've come a long way in just a very short period of time. Make sure that you do day one's homework assignment and that you struggle with it. It's gonna exercise some of the thoughts that we covered in today's videos. Uh, and it'll help reinforce those ideas as you apply them to a new situation uh, that's somewhat similar to other pieces that we've done up to this point. We just kind of combine them all together into one project. So this is the way that you learn, by forcing yourself and making yourself uncomfortable. It's part of the process. You can't get around it. It will give you more benefit than just watching videos uh, and sitting back and and and, and and looking at what I do. Okay, so make sure you're getting yourself in the code. Congratulations, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.